Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of How'd They Do That? I'm Mark Wallace. Well today on the show we have Patrick Ernzen. He is a professional photographer who shoots uh, cars, people and things and he was able to join us right here in the studio. So here's our chat with Patrick Ernzen. All right, well Patrick, so uh, welcome so much to the show. Um, so tell us a little bit about your photography. You shoot cars and people and things. Tell us a little bit more about the types of cars and people and things you shoot. Yeah, I mean I shoot I guess a little bit of everything. Um, Primarily cars, uh, mostly exotics, rare classics, that sort of thing, but a little bit of everything. Um, just kind of started getting involved in the local automotive community and uh, meeting different people at different events, checking out their collections, and just kind of started shooting cars as a favor for them, that sort of thing, and eventually became more than that. Mm -hmm. um, started meeting some people at local shops, and uh, that kind of became my focus, not really anything I planned. <laughs> Just uh, for sort of fell into it, I guess. But um, that is awesome. I mean, there are so many people that are like wishing they could fall yeah. into it. <laughs> you know, like you. So you're shooting Ferraris and uh, Lamborghini, the crazy cars like that, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I got kind of involved with the Ferrari Club, starting to meet all those guys, and uh, you know. Where, how do you hurt. find a Ferrari club? Uh, I mean, you just phone them up, hey, I'm coming over. Basically just online, actually, is where I met 90% of the people that I've dealt with, and then just word of mouth after that, you know? You start talking to someone, and they mention that this person has a car, and they like photos, and then uh, just kind of goes from there. So a lot of the, the car photos that you've taken, are, are they're spectacular uh, oh, shots. Nice. <laughs> um, and one of the things I really love about it is the lighting. And I know you haven't been shooting for decades. You've been shooting for a few years. Mm -hmm. What kind of lighting do you have? Because uh, you're just sort of getting started, you know, a few years ago. Yeah, and honestly, the vast majority of the time, it's purely natural light. Mm -hmm. um, I just kind of actually prefer the look of it. Maybe it's something that I, again, have just kind of uh, grown to like because I didn't have the, the money or the resources to get all that equipment and set it all up. But just over time, I've, I don't know, I think that, especially here in Arizona, we have such good lighting during sunsets, that sort of thing, and that, um, I just like the warm look right. of it. And uh, so let's talk a little bit, let's, so let's rewind a little bit. When you're mm -hmm. going out to shoot, uh, let's say a Ferrari or something, um, how do you scout the location? How do you figure out what gear you're gonna have? You know, once somebody says, you know, I want you to shoot my crazy expensive car, mm -hmm. um, what do you do from there? Uh, I usually have about a dozen or so locations in mind that I've actually just either used in the past a little bit or I've just, within that couple months, drove around and looked for spots that look good. Um, and then I typically try to find most of these guys, you know, don't like to rack the miles on their cars. <laughs> so it ends up being somewhere near them the vast majority of the time. Um, a lot of times it's just right around the road from their house. Uh, down the road I've done in front of the people's houses, garages, that sort of thing. Obviously if I can, I like to right. get out to a more exotic place. But So does it sort of fit that most people that have these cars that are you know, hundred thousand plus dollar cars tend to have nice locations by yeah. their house. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing is that I mean, most of them, their houses are what people will normally take a car to. Right. So just even that, or in their garage, um, or just down the road. Yeah, I mean, some people's obviously their houses and their neighborhoods are just spectacular. <laughs> right. And so now, how do you light the cars? I mean, do you just let the sun do what it does? Do you use scrims? Do you how, how do you do that? Pretty much just light what the natural light just let it do what it does um i do use you know flashes on occasion just certain specific shots um details that kind of stuff so have you ever found yourself in a situation where the the light just isn't cooperating and you're sort of like oh my gosh what am i going to do yeah with a lot of these uh, the cars and the situations it's kind of i don't know what i'm getting into until i get there and then also a lot of them are kind of on a really tight time frame whether it's they need to get the photos to a magazine um or they just only have the car, you know, for like a week I've had it before where I'm shooting a car and then within a week they're sending it across the country or to Dubai even with one of them. And so they kind of just have to get it done. Um, and so you just have to find a location that works. And, you know, like I said, most of the time I don't even bring the lighting because I don't anticipate having to use it. Right. So in those situations, I just try to find something that works. I've used um, uh, just big walls kind of sit behind there and block stuff out that way. Um, I know one of the shots that you have that I, I thought was interesting, it's uh, 
you actually stuck the car under an overpass mm -hmm. and put it in shade. Um, and I know that location is lots of signs and warnings and yeah so yeah how'd you i mean did photoshop yeah that's a big part of it <laughs> yeah. um you know the, I, I know the shot you're talking about and we uh we went down there expecting it to be a better location than it was it ended up being kind of wide open uh with just a bunch of signs like you said which just created long shadows and really kind of an ugly look mm -hmm. on the car and um so we ended up finding an overpass we kind of tuck it under uh use a little bit of the light it was actually a lit overpass so I do want to talk about your post-production mm -hmm. and how you do some of the Photoshop work. But uh, before we do that, let's rewind a little bit and talk about the camera gear that you use. What camera, what lenses, tripods, you know, what, what are you out there using? I honestly, my, uh, my setup's pretty basic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm actually currently using a Canon 20D. Sweet, so, I had a 10D, that was, yeah. that was awesome. <laughs> it's uh, my second one. I had one and it gave me a good, I think, 70,000 pictures I put through it before I got some dust in it taking some dirt bike photos and that one died, so I got a new one, I was just familiar with it. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just have a, I have a total of three lenses as well. Mm -hmm. a, a Tamron wide angle, um, 17 to 50, 2.8, uh, a Canon 51.4, right. um, and then a, a kind of Canon zoom, a 28 to 105 that I use sometimes. Right. So. Um, and so uh, of those three lenses, mm -hmm. do you use them equally or is there one that you just, you're grabbing uh, almost every time? I use the Tamron most of the time actually, it's just a little more flexible and for the automotive stuff it kind of gives me uh, that wide that I need but I can still zoom in and being the wider aperture I can still get a little, uh, you know, nice depth of field, right. shallow depth of field on the uh, details and that kind of stuff. I do like to switch the 50 um, quite a bit just because, you know, obviously. It's the nifty 50, you gotta have yeah. it. I love that lens. <laughs> Absolutely. So uh, let's talk about then your post-production mm -hmm. work. How do you retouch? Is it Photoshop or using Lightroom? What are, you, what are you doing? I use mostly Photoshop. I have used a, a few other programs. Um, I'm just, for one thing, very familiar with Photoshop. I kind of started off actually, before I did photography, I did a, more graphic design, web design, that sort of thing. So I was already a bit familiar with the program and then I started jumping into that. and. It just, uh, I actually almost work quicker with that than some of the programs that are more photography right. focused. And then I, uh, you know, allows me to get rid of distracting things in the object pretty right. easily, or objects in the background pretty easily, that sort of thing, so. And you're actually, I think, the third or fourth photographer we've had on how they do that, that who was a graphic designer and then became a photographer. Oh, yeah. So um, do you find that that helps you with your composition and understanding colors and the post-production work? I mean, how does that influence what you do? I think it may. Um, I guess I've kind of always been into that and then artwork too, uh, painting, drawing, that sort of thing. And uh, I think it was just kind of a natural progression for me. I always kind of liked photography, but I didn't uh, ever have a camera. I would occasionally borrow people's, this is like 10 years ago, right. occasionally borrow people's uh, cameras and mess around with them for about a week, that sort of thing. Um, and then finally, I decided to just jump in and buy an SLR, um, and then I just kind of went from there. That's awesome. So uh, not only do you shoot digital, you still shoot some film, some I pretty do. cool black and white stuff. Yeah. Um, in fact, one of my favorite shots on your website is this cat, and it's got this shadow. I, just, I don't know. I love this shot. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about uh, those black and white photos and the film stuff that you've done, and why you do that, and you know, walk us through mm -hmm. some of that stuff. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> It's actually fairly recent that I started getting into the film. I, it's only within the last, say, two years, I would guess, um, that I, I started off with digital and then just kind of got into the film. I think I just like the look of I, black and white film, especially high, uh, mm -hmm. high speed, right. uh, really grainy, that sort of thing. There's just something, I don't know, that it's just different about it. And I kind of like the challenges of it. I actually use a, a um, 1960s Canon Pelix camera um, with a 50 millimeter 1.4 lens that's stuck wide open right. and uh, the viewfinder's kind of dirty, that sort of thing. Um, <laughs> Isn't it awesome when you're shooting and you're like, I don't know what I'm going to yeah, do, but I know it's going to be wonderful. Right, right. And that's kind of what I like about it. You know, it's a bit more, to me, a bit more challenging. I like the idea that, you know, once I finally develop the film, it's kind of a surprise whether or not some things came out, especially with those, some of the more challenging subjects. Like, I, I really like to do uh, concert photography. Mm -hmm. And with that, the lighting is so hit and miss and so high contrast that looking through that dingy viewfinder, it's almost hard to see if I'm even focused half the right. time. So now we have a lot of people that ask us about that. How do you shoot concerts? So you're shooting with what, at an ISO or ASA rating of what, 1600 or 3200 film? Is that Usually accurate? I go 16 or 18, or I'm sorry, 1600 or 800. Um, it just kind of depends on the venue. Some are better than others. Mm -hmm. um, 
it also depends on sometimes the musician. I mean, if they're kind of a slow moving person, you can get away with the uh, <laughs> with the slower speed and some of the other stuff you need. The real high Lawrence Welk, easy to shoot. <laughs> so, <laughs> that'd be a little weird, actually. But um, yeah, and so. Uh, the grain, I think, just adds to the whole character of that, that concert. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, to me, it just, I don't know, there's something about it, and that's why I actually almost prefer the higher speed film if I can use it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I like things not to be quite in focus, to be a little bit blurry, to be really grainy. Um, it just feels natural to me for whatever reason like for concert photography. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Well, you have a ton of awesome work, so much that we don't have time to talk about it all today. Mm -hmm. where, where do people find you on the web? You can find me at uh, patrickernson.com or also uh, desert-motors.com is my automotive website, kind of a local Arizona one for the most part, but it has a lot of my photography there as well. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining yeah, us today. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks there you go. Me. Well, thanks for joining us today for our chat with Patrick Ernzen. He's a really terrific guy. Remember, you can see more of his work at his website, or you can visit the Adorama Learning Center to see some of his shots. Plus, you can see some of the other videos that we've done here for how they do that. Remember, if you would like to see somebody on our show, please send me your suggestions to askmark at adorama.com. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next time. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.